Next topic is annotation. So we are going to learn what is and why annotation. In fact, annotation is becoming very, very important in Java programming language. Any new language features uh, in Java is in a form of annotations. So annotations are heavily used these days. Uh, we are going to actually see how we can define and use annotations. Typically, you are going to use, you are going to use annotations defined by someone else, uh, uh, the, uh, by some specification. Uh, however, here we are going to learn how we can define and use our own annotations. Uh, there are three different types of uh, annotations and uh, we're going to see each of those and uh, we'll also see the concept of meta annotations. Meta annotations are annotations that are used to annotate other annotations. So that's the reason it's called the meta annotations. Uh, we'll also see nested annotation because uh, annotation can be nested and uh, then we are going to see reflection, uh, how we can actually use a reflection to get the information about annotation on the uh, the uh, uh, on the uh, on the class. So if a class is annotated, uh, you can actually find out uh, the what annotations are in fact associated with a particular class object. Okay, so moving forward. So how annotations are used? Annotations are used in any, any every place, uh, you know, many places. Uh, it basically is used to affect the way programs are treated by tools and libraries or compilers. Uh, so annotations are typically used by tools to produce derived files, like it could be used by compiler, it could be used by IDE, it could be used by runtime tools, okay. and uh, it might actually generate some Java code, it might generate some deployment descriptor, it might generate a class files. It really depends on how that annotation is designed for and how it is implemented. Now, before Java SE 5, annotation-like features were in fact available. Uh, basically, uh, you know, the things that are used to describe your code. Like a transient is one example. Transient is uh, the, uh, the um, transient is used to describe a field. That field should not be persisted or serialized. Okay, so it's just indication that that particular field should not be uh, serialized when an object is realized. Serializable interface. So this is a single mark interface as well. So basically when you use a serializable on any class, that indicates that class is serializable. Okay, and uh, java.comments, those are describing your code. Uh, X.let, nobody's using anymore, so I'm not going to even talk about it. So basically, these are the things that are used to describe your code. Okay, uh, so annotation is a lot more powerful and standard based and general purpose, uh, the uh, scheme for describing your code. Okay. And uh, again, uh, this description could be picked up by tools to generate code, generate class files, to perform some operations, anything you want. Okay, so in fact, there are few annotations that are used by compiler. So these are the annotations you can use in your code, and these are used by the compiler. At deprecated means that this is the class that are uh, being deprecated. Okay, so it's an indication uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, the to the compiler that uh, you want this code to be deprecated. Override that's an exercise you're gonna actually do. So you know the uh, override annotation is used with a method indicating you are overriding the code rather than overloading the code. Okay, and the uh, at suppress warnings is basically telling compiler don't give me any warnings okay so suppress those warnings i don't want to see that warning okay so these are annotations uh, that you can use in your source code and these are used by the compiler uh, to do something so in the case of in the case of override as you are going to see in the hands on lab you know you said you are overriding a method but if the method signature does not match with a parent or ancestor's uh, method, then compiler will let you know. 
okay oh you said you want to override but there is no method you are overriding sometimes you make a typo you know you make a typo and sometimes the method signature is wrong that kind of things will be detected by the compiler if you use override okay so why annotations so annotation enables so-called the declarative programming style so by declarative programming style you know it's basically generate uh, it basically uh, result in less coding okay because uh, you are basically telling the tool to generate the boilerplate code for example okay uh, and it's easier to change as well so rather than uh, changing your Java code changing annotation is uh, a lot simpler usually okay so by using one single annotation that could actually mean you know many boilerplate code will be automatically generated by the compiler for example or the tool okay uh, so that's what the annotation is all about so in a sense you can think of annotation as let's say encapsulation of some code for example that's one example it's not the uh, you know all the example of annotation okay uh, it eliminates the need for maintaining side files that must be kept up to date with changes in source files. Yeah, so, you know, what it means is this. Uh, in Let me give you an example of Spring Framework. Uh, Spring Framework is, uh, you know, enterprise level framework people use to build, for example, web application, okay? And uh, in Spring Framework, they used to use XML file to, you know, to declare uh, so called declare so called the uh, beans and their relationships okay uh, the uh, the uh, uh, but having an XML file to describe these kind of things is actually sometimes inconvenient because uh, of the two reasons because uh, it cannot be type checked okay even if you have a typo in your XML file uh, you are not going to actually uh, detect that during compile time only during runtime you're going to actually experience you know that type of type of problem right because that's an XML file it's not being compiled it's not being checked by the Java compiler okay that's one uh, problem the second problem is you know you have to actually sync up between uh, Java source files and XML file meaning every Java class bean spring bean needs to be declared in XML file meaning you have to be responsible for yourself uh, maintaining two two different files you know the, the one set of source files and then one set of the XML files okay so that's the second problem so the solution these days actually the recommended practice practice these days in spring framework is that you know whatever configuration information that you used to have in the XML file you want to use annotation in your Java source file okay so by doing that uh, you are going to have a type safety uh, because annotation is a Java class as you are going to see in a few minutes uh, if it is misspelled the compiler will detect it so that's one advantage compile time type checking is possible second is that you don't have to have any extra file anymore you don't need any side file you basically have this configuration information in the form of annotation right in your source file so a single source file set is actually good enough okay so that's the reason why the annotation is becoming more useful even in enterprise applications any question on that okay moving forward okay so we're gonna actually do exercise one yeah because uh, I want to get the sense of the uh, override annotation so the exercise one basically uh, you know this is equals yeah I think one of the question uh, that was asked today was you know how we actually implement equals method right okay uh, on our own how we override equals method so this is an example I actually was thinking about okay so if you think about the object class so let's actually go with the object class I'm gonna actually go to system and then I'm gonna go to uh, object class if you go to the object class okay that is uh, the equals method where is equals method yeah here okay equals method okay uh, it indicates whether the some class some other class is equal to uh, this one or not so you know I think it's actually probably dummy uh, implementation actually let's take a look at the uh, uh, the source code I'm gonna just go to the source code of system and then I'm gonna go to the source code of 
object. Ah, yeah, it looks like that is not there, so I'm gonna just yeah, I'm gonna just create the object. Object. Oops. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, source of object. And uh, we want to see the equals to equals oh, it's, it's not it's not equals to equals. Is equals implementation. Oops, did I see that? I'm looking for equals. Oh, here you go. Okay. So yeah. So the implementation is basically yeah. It's actually doing the uh, um, this double equal sign means it's actually checking. Uh, the uh, whether these objects are pointing to the same object. So this is the uh, semantical behavior, default semantical behavior for object class. So sometimes you want to you know, change the uh, behavior of this for your own type, right? So in our previous presentation of a collection, you know, we want to have a semantical meaning of equals for list object, for example, is that if the items of uh, it, both uh, the uh, list object contains the same set of objects, same set of items, right? Okay, so we need to override this equals method. But remember, the argument is object, okay? And the return type is boolean, okay? So in order to override, we need to actually use exactly the same uh, method signature. Name has to be equals and argument is supposed to be object type, okay? Now let's take a look at the uh, let, you know the so now you know so so you thought yeah so basically if you take a look at this code so in my class I want to uh, for this override annotation class I want to provide a different implementation of uh, equals so I thought I was actually overriding it okay so you know it's actually boolean name is equals however look at this. I'm actually taking string type argument. That's different from this guy. It's, this guy is expecting object. So you thought that you are overriding it, but in fact, you are overloading it. You are actually adding this new method. Okay? So in that case, you know, so it's actually giving you totally different behavior because you thought you are doing overriding it, but in fact, it's overloading it. You're actually adding the name, uh, you're adding new method with the same name, okay? So in that case, you are going to actually use this override annotation. So this is basically indication to the compiler that I am overriding equals method in my parent or ancestor class. So compiler will check that out. Compiler will actually compare these things with any of the method in the parent and ancestor class. And if there is a mismatch, it will give you a compiler error. So it says method does not override or implement the method from the super type. Okay. So override annotation is actually useful. And in fact, you see this override annotation everywhere. Okay. Uh, so it, because it could actually give you compile time uh, checking. Uh, so I'm going to actually let you modify override annotation Java as following. So, you know, so now if you change it to object, then it should work fine because now you are overriding uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, object type uh, equals method. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you guys uh, five minutes to try exercise one. Right. Now, let's see how you can define and use your own annotations. So, as I said, you are going to mostly use annotations rather than defining your own, okay? So pretty much all 
uh, Java specifications uh, matter of actually defining their set of annotations. For example, uh, you know the uh, Java web services, uh, RESTful-based web services. They actually define a set of annotations uh, uh, the, uh, that could be used to build RESTful-based web services. Uh, EJB has its own set of web services. Uh, the uh, so you know Java specification is basically uh, the uh, defining a uh, bunch of annotations for that particular domain. Okay, so usually you're gonna use uh, annotations most of the time, but you can also define, meaning create your own annotation as well. Okay, uh, I said annotation type rather than annotation because annotation is a genuine Java type, just like interface and classes are type, right? Annotation is also genuine type and enum is genuine type okay so uh, you know I just actually emphasize the fact that annotation t is the type that's the reason I say annotation type okay but uh, the uh, beyond this slide you know I'm gonna just use the annotation okay annotation type definitions are similar to normal Java interface definitions so syntax is pretty similar to interface definitions okay uh, the uh, uh, it, there are a couple of differences however uh, it should have at sign before interface keyword and uh, just like interface it should have a set of methods and uh, each method declaration however defines an element in the annotation type okay and rest of it is probably that much that much important so I'm gonna actually just focus on these two aspects of it okay so this is an example of annotation definition. So as you can see this syntax looks similar to interface, right? So public interface and uh, then name of the interface and then set of methods. Very similar. So the difference, the only difference, actually there are a couple of differences. Uh, actually these two differences are important. First of all, unlike interface definition, you have at sign uh, before interface. So that indicates that this is annotation definition. Okay. And then we, we have a set of methods, okay? These methods are basically the name of an element in the annotation. So there is an ID element, there is a synopsis element, and also one more thing that is different in this slide is that <clears throat> you can have a default values. So for engineer element, the default value is unassigned. For date, is uh, default value is unimplemented. Okay. So this is the definition. Okay. Now let's see how you can use annotation. Okay. So once an annotation type is defined, you can use it to annotate declarations. You can use class, method, and field with this annotation. So you can think of annotation as a special kind of modifier. So by modifier, you are talking about the public, or you know the public and the, what is the other uh, static. These are all modifiers, right? So you can think of annotation is a special kind of modifier. Okay. In fact, you can use it in any place that other modifiers can be used, like a public static final. So. Uh, the uh, you know these modifiers and uh, annotation they can they, they can be actually kind of mixed up but uh, the by convention annotations typically precede all the other modifiers okay uh, so annotations consist of an at sign followed by annotation type and parenthesis parenthesized list of element value pairs so let's see an example of how to use annotation Okay, so this is the usage of annotation that we have created. So this is the uh, definition of request for enhancement annotation. So this is a definition. Then you can use that annotation like this. So you are going to specify the name of the annotation with the S sign. Then you provide a key value pair separated by comma. Okay, so in this case, ID element is set to 2868724, synopsis is enable something, and enable engineers Mr. Peabody, date is something. Okay, so in this case, you are using this annotation for this method. 
right? So you are annotating this method. Does that make sense? In the same way, if you take a look at the uh, you know, override case, we are using this override annotation to describe this method, indicating I am overriding this equals method. Okay? Okay, so definition and usage of annotation. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's move on to three different types of annotations in terms of sophistication. Yeah, so this is my own categorization. It's not like something you find in the uh, in the uh, you know annotation spec. Okay, I found this is actually kind of useful categorization. Uh, the first one is a marker annotation and the second one is a single member annotation. Third is multi-member annotation. We have already seen multi-member annotation so this is a multi-member annotation. Uh, by member I'm talking about set of elements. Okay. Okay so let's talk about the marker annotation. Mark annotation is the annotation that has no element meaning it has no member. So it is a simplest annotation. Okay? So the definition goes like this. I am creating what is called a preliminary annotation. Okay? And you can see it doesn't have any method, meaning it doesn't have any element. Okay? Now, you can use this annotation, uh, mark annotation, using parentheses. So, you know, basically, Whenever you are using annotation, you can ha you have a parenthesis if there are elements. Because the mark annotation doesn't have any element, you don't have to have a parenthesis, but you could. Okay, so I'm describing this time travel class with preliminary annotation, but because there is no element, I don't have to have a parenthesis. Does this make sense? Okay, so this is marker annotation. So again, this is a definition and this is a usage. Okay, moving forward. Now, single member annotation. There is a single element, okay? Uh, the uh, now, so this is a definition, okay? Uh, so copyright annotation has a single member, okay? Now, if this single member annotation has the name of this method is value, meaning if the element name is value, then you don't have to specify, when you use it, you don't have to specify value equal this. You could, okay? It's the same thing as, you know, so value equal something is the same thing as without value. So, but if this is not value, meaning in a string x, y, z, then you have to say x, y, z equal uh, the uh, the uh, this value okay so when element is named as value then you don't have to actually say value equal uh, you can just specify the value does this make sense question okay so we're gonna actually exercise this in the hands-on lab okay so that is exercise two Okay, so we are going to, uh, uh, yeah, so, so, you know, we get annotation single value uh, project, and when you run it, and, uh, you know, it doesn't probably describe, provide that much information. So let's actually take a look at the uh, code. So we have uh, one annotation called mutator one value, and you can see the name of the element is value, okay? And then we have uh, mutator two variable annotation. Now this is not value; it's a variable. Okay. And then we have another one called the value xxx. Okay. All right. So now when we are using it, so this these are the definitions of annotations. We have defined the three annotations. Okay. Now we are going to use these annotations. So we are going to use the first one and x y z 
you can see we don't say value equals something, okay? And that's perfectly fine because the value is actually special. So this is okay. So there is no compile error you are going to see. This one is also okay because a variable, uh, because this is not value, you know, we have to specify variable equal and, uh, you know, the type is string, okay? Uh, the same thing for uh, value xxx. You have to actually say value xxx equal abc. Okay? So, you know, all these guys are in fact syntactically valid. Okay? Now, let's actually modify the application and see what happens. Okay? So, what you're going to do is uh, we're going to actually have these two guys. Instead of variable equal, we're going to just say xyz. And same thing for this guy. And you're going to experience compile error because you know the names of the the uh, the the element is not value you know in this case it's variable and it's value xxx okay so you're going to actually experience compile error like this okay all right so i'm going to give you guys a few minutes to try this exercise board Okay, so we take a look at mark annotation, which doesn't have any member, and then we saw single member annotation, uh, which is special in the sense that if the single member's name is value, then you don't have to specify value equals something, even though you could. Okay, okay now multi member annotation. So we have seen this example already, right? So we have uh, four members ID, synopsis, and engineer, and date. Okay, and then you can use this annotation like this. Uh, so I'm going to just explain the uh, lab document and then we'll just move forward. Yeah, so uh, in this case, uh, we created accessor annotation. It has, in this case, two uh, members. One is a variable name and variable type, and this variable type has a default values. Okay. Uh, in the case of uh, the usage of it, yeah, so we can use that annotation uh, and uh, variable name is name and variable type is int. This is fine, okay? And this one is also fine because uh, uh, we don't have to specify variable type because variable type has uh, default values, okay? All right. Uh, again, you know, we are we, we are mostly focusing the syntax of these things, okay? The semantical meaning of accessor. That's something that you can define uh, someplace else, okay? And so that the tools might be able to actually do something with it, okay? Uh, let's see. Yeah, so one other example that you could use in the uh, in Spring Framework or even Java e is that, you know, you can specify in terms of security, you can specify this method should be accessible only by uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, principles who belong to a particular role, okay? So you can say there is in fact the role uh, annotation in uh, Spring Framework and Java e. So you can say at role and then you specify the list of uh, the uh, the uh, the roles like uh, administrator uh, or super administrator. Uh, that means that this method can be accessible only by uh, principles that belong who belong to one of those uh, the uh, uh, roles that you specify. Okay, so you know as I said, annotation is used every every everywhere. Okay, all right. Any questions? Uh, question from Rajesh. Is there a way to know the list of all available annotations for a class to be more specific for a method? Yeah, so you can go to specific specification. Okay, so let's actually go to JAX.RS specification. So you go to JAX.RS uh, annotations. Uh, so if you go to JAX.RS annotations, uh, let's see. Okay, so. Yes, you see, these are annotations that are defined in JAXRS, like a path, get, put, post, delete, and produces and consumers. And if you go each of this, it actually defines the semantical meaning of what this produce is supposed to be. So when the tools, okay, take a look at this, uh, you know, the source code that contains this one, tools will actually generate like a source code. Uh, and ID also knows what to do with it, okay? So because the specification defines exactly what this produces means. Does that answer your question, Rajesh? 
okay let's see question from Joel for yeah let me actually forward the question to everyone so that everyone can take a look at first for values inside an annotation can I use enum uh, for example say we have annotation called is beta and uh, could I have enum in the case which would be defined various type of yeah absolutely okay yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see yeah we, we are going to actually see uh, in a nested nested uh, annotation example in a few minutes okay so that might actually answer the question you just asked in fact okay so that yeah so we are looking at the lab documentation right uh, where am I? This one. Oh, actually, I was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Multi member annotation. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, we yeah okay. That's pretty simple. All right. So next topic is our um, uh, nested annotation. So let's move forward with that. Nested annotation. So uh, nested annotation. Yeah. So here we have a definition of a reviewer. Uh, the uh, annotation. Okay. So that's the definition. Now the type of uh, this. Member, my name is is called a name. Okay. Now you can see this name is in fact uh, the uh, another annotation. Okay. So this name has uh, first and last. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I think to the question of Joe uh, Joel, let me actually go back to the slide. Yeah. Maybe the yeah. So here we go. Uh, so return types restricted so you know the, the return type meaning the type of that element okay could be one of this primitive string class enum annotations or arrays of preceding types okay so enum is definitely supported okay all right so moving forward uh, nested annotation but this is the case that we are nesting another annotation into uh, the uh, is parent annotation okay so now when you are using this uh, you know this annotation of Vivia now my name uh, so basically you know the uh, my name element it has a single element right so it has a my name element is now the name of another annotation okay so at and then this annotation has a first and last uh, element so you know you can see this is a uh, nested version of it question all right so let's take a look at the exercise four yeah so basically it is exactly the same uh, so annotation name and then we have a review annotation then we are using this review annotation like that okay so pretty straightforward so let me move forward Okay, now let's talk about the concept of meta annotation. So, as the name implies, meta annotations are used to describe other annotations. So, there are two meta annotations one is at target meta annotation, and the other one is retention meta annotation. Okay, so let's talk about target meta annotation. So target meta annotation restricts the use of the annotation is describing to element type. So you know the uh, element type you can specify is a type, field, method, parameter, constructor, local variable, annotation type, package, and stuff like that. What that means is, uh, let me actually use the yeah yeah. So let me actually explain it first. So I'm using this target meta annotation for describing this access annotation. So this is a definition of access annotation. So when I'm creating access annotation, I'm using this meta annotation. So when I use target element type field, that means 
this access annotation could be used only on field. Okay? So if you try to use access annotation, so this is okay because I'm using this access annotation on a field. But if you try to use access annotation on a method, that's a compile error. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go back to the second uh, meta annotation, which is the retention. So retention meta annotation is uh, used to specify how long annotation information is going to be kept. Okay, so there are in fact three uh, retention policy. So these are enum uh, the uh, types. Uh, so source, class, and runtime, and uh, class is a default. So when you specify retention with source, that means the annotation information is going to be available at the source level. So when you compile the code, that annotation information is gone. Okay. When you use class retention policy, then class file, you know, that class file will contain the annotation information. So that could be used by the tool, for example. You know, the tool actually read class file, right? So they can actually take a look at the, uh, if there is a class level annotation, they will actually do something about it, right? Okay. Now, the third one is runtime. That's the longest. Runtime run means that the annotation information is in fact available even during runtime. So these are, this runtime uh, annotation information should be able to be available to you through reflection APIs. Okay, so we're gonna actually take a look at that in a few minutes. Okay, so source, class, and runtime. Three different uh, the uh, annotation, I'm sorry, three different retention policy. So in this case, uh, I said uh, for access annotation, I said retention, retention policy class. So when it is used, okay, the class file that contains this variable will have this information as part of the class file. Okay, but you are not gonna be able to actually read it during runtime yourself because it's at the class level. Okay, it's typically used by the uh, you know tool who can dissect the bytecode. Okay. Okay, so let's do exercise five and six. So Okay, so let's see, uh, annotation meta. So when you run the code, yeah. When you run the code, so we are defining uh, the exposed annotation and uh, the target metadata says it can be used only with the field. And uh, retention is uh, runtime, which means I should be able to access information about this annotation. Okay, meaning, you know, I should be able to actually see whether the uh, main class's name field has this exposed annotation, okay, uh, dating runtime through through reflection, okay. Uh, now, if you try to use exposed annotation with uh, a method, that's a compiler because you are restricted to use this annotation only with a field, okay. So try to take this out and see, uh, yeah, so that's basically, you know, the, uh, the uh, experience of compiler. Uh, for your own exercise, use annotation applicable to multiple places by using array mechanism as shown in the, yeah, so, yeah, so you can, you can specify uh, the, the target using uh, array like this, okay? So basically, you can use that annotation not only on constructor, but on the method. Okay, and so you can actually keep adding, you know, the uh, multiple set of those things. Okay, so it's not constrained to uh, just a single, uh, the uh, the element, uh, single, you know, the uh, destination. Uh, you can specify multiple of those. Okay, so that's exercise five. Now let's take a look at the exercise six. This is about retention. Okay, so here, uh, uh, yeah, when you run the annotation uh, runtime project. Okay, uh, you're gonna actually see this information. So let's actually try to run it annotation. So annotation one time.
Okay, so uh, it actually gives you information about the annotation one, annotation two. Okay. Okay, so uh, here uh, we set the retention of this annotation. My annotation runtime retention is set with runtime, and uh, then uh, we are uh, and then we actually define the uh, another annotation called the reviewer uh, runtime annotation. So we have we define the two annotations, one, two, two annotations. And uh, we actually define third one, uh, which is one is uh, this one is set with a class, okay? Uh, so this my annotation class retention uh, annotation is set with retention with a class, okay? So in the main class, uh, basically we are going to get yeah. So uh, yeah, so this is the way that you can get the information about the. Uh, so we actually get the. Um, uh, AC, uh, what is AC? Oh, so this is annotated class. Oh, okay, so in, in the main class, uh, wait a minute, oh, okay, so yeah, this is the code. In the main method, basically we create a main object. So main object is basically, this is the uh, main object. So, uh, you know, when you create it, we are basically using this constructor method, which created annotation class object, okay? So that is actually annotation class object referenced by AC, okay? So we get the uh, class information about that AC annotated class, okay? And then we get annotation of that class using get annotations method. So this is in fact runtime uh, the uh, the uh, uh, reflection to you know get the uh, all the annotations associated with uh, the uh, this uh, the annotation uh, uh, class, annotated class, okay? And then we are basically in a loop to just, dis you know, display, okay? And what you should actually see is basically just uh, these two annotations, this guy and this guy. You should not see information about this guy because this is a class level annotation. So that's the reason you actually see my annotation, runtime annotation, my and reviewer, so my annotation, runtime annotation, and reviewer, runtime annotation, okay? So now the change you're gonna actually make is actually you're gonna actually make, uh, oh, okay, this is annotation, annotated class, okay? So it's actually annotated with these three, uh, three annotations. So this guy is not gonna be available during runtime, okay? So you're gonna actually modify the code so that even the third one, okay, is gonna actually be retained in uh, run with the uh, runtime annotation, and then when you run it, then you are going to actually see uh, the uh, uh, that annotation is also visible. Okay, all right. So I'm going to let you guys do this exercise five and six. I'll give you about uh, ten uh, or fifteen minutes. Our last topic is reflection. Yeah, we have already seen uh, reflections on uh, the uh, in our previous exercise. You can call the get annotations, and then you are able to get all the annotations for that class, right? Okay. Uh, so here we're gonna actually see a few more uh, reflection-based APIs. Okay. So for mark annotation, uh, you can actually get the uh, uh, you can specify my class. So this my class dot class that's actually providing class object, and you can check whether uh, beta version dot class meaning beta version uh, beta version is annotation so annotation is a genuine class right so you can certainly uh, refer to uh, beta on beta version annotation with a beta version dot class so basically you are checking whether beta version mark annotation is present uh, on my class meaning whether beta version annotation is annotating my class or not okay uh, single member annotation goes like this. Uh, if you know single member annotation, you want to typically find out the value of it, right? So what is the value of the uh, that uh, uh, you know the uh, value annotation member? So here my class dot class get annotation. So this is the uh, your annotation class object, and then you can call value. Okay. And multi-member annotation is uh, once you got the, uh, so this is my class being annotated by author annotation and author annotation has a first name and last name, right? So once you got the uh, 
a notation object you can call first name okay so you can almost think of this like a annotation object itself is like an object which contains first name and last name fields right so basically by calling first name uh, you were able to get the name value of the first name and value of the last name uh, the element okay uh, so this is assumed yeah so this is the uh, 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 multi-member notation and uh, this is the uh, um, oh, okay so it looks like I have already covered this one yeah, yeah I should actually remove this guy <laughs> from the slide 29 okay so I already covered okay okay <coughs> so let's do exercise 7 Uh, so we already have seen get annotations, right? Okay, uh, and uh, and uh, so we we are going to okay. So we are going to take a look at the annotation. So this is a Marco notation uh, called the beta version, and uh, and everything they all have to have runtime uh, retention policy. Otherwise, it's not gonna work, right? Okay, they all. Uh, runtime annotation and this is a single member annotation okay so copyright annotation is a single value and the value uh, the name of the element happened to be value which is good and author has a first name and last name and uh, so we have a uh, my class that is annotated with those mark annotation and uh, single member annotation and uh, multi-member annotation and uh, basically we are just getting those values okay uh, these are the same code that I sh um, showed you in the slide and uh, yeah so if you try you know, if you modify the code if you change the re retention policy class and then uh, you are not gonna actually see uh, that information okay uh, the um, Okay, so I'm gonna actually let you do uh, this, uh, re you know, reflection, uh, the exercise. I'll give you uh, maybe three or four minutes, and we are going to.